the option two and all we have positioned the moving iron instrument in the last class so today we will discuss about the dynamometer actually you may have heard the name of dynamometer or we are going to call this instrument name as emmc also emmc is nothing but electromagnetic moving coil instrument here so in our actually all of you have seen the wattmeter have seen the wattmeter yes sir that is uh, almost we are going to use the dynamometer only that is wattmeter whatever we are going to use in the department that is dynamometer only we will call that one so the main advantage of this dynamometer are the electromagnetic moving coil the application we are going to use this can be used as voltmeter ammeter as well as wattmeter from this instrument that is a big advantage of this instrument we can use this instrument as a voltmeter ammeter and wattmeter and we can measure ac as well as dc also that is we can measure ac as well as dc also it is applicable for both the sources ac or both the supply ac sources or dc sources so this instrument can be used for measurement of voltage current and power here now the voltage current and power all three parameters electrical parameters we can measure by using this instrument here the difference between the pmmc see a pmmc and dynamometer type instrument is that the permanent magnet is replaced by electromagnet in the permanent pmmc what is the long form of pmmc Permanent magnet. Permanent magnet moving coil. Okay, here it is a EMMC. It is nothing but electromagnet. Instead of permanent, we are going to use electromagnet. In the permanent magnet, the what is that? The permanent magnets we are fixed magnets we are using over there. But here the electromagnet. Electromagnet is nothing but one coil wound we are going to use here. while wound we are going to use that is called electromagnet so permanent magnets are replaced by electromagnet that's it all other working principle is same only here okay next construction and here construction we will tell that one later a fixed coil is divided into two equal half means one fixed coil one moving coil actually two coils are there these are the parts of the electrodynamometer instrument here now that fixed coil is split into two parts and we have to separate it into two places in between these two half of the fixed coil we are going to place one moving coil over there okay both the fixed and moving coils are air only means air cored the instead of iron material material for the core we are going to use nothing we are using just wire only we are going to use it is nothing but air cored we are going to call so that hysteresis effect will be zero the pointer is attached to the spindle and the same principle of pmmc that i will after explaining the diagram i will read this one then you will understand that in this uh, dynamometer type instrument we are going to use the spring control method for the controlling force and for the damping purpose we are going to use the air damping is used here so i told you people so we'll go for the construction and working principle this is the circuit diagram of electrodynamometer is it visible or not screen yes sir yes sir okay i'll take the annotate wait a second spot i don't take that one so here this is fixed coil we are going to consider and this one is also fixed coil this complete it is a one coil only but we have split it into two parts we have split it into two parts i will tell you see here this is one coil only one coil only it is there but instead of this complete one coil i will make two parts here now this one here i will some wound i will do here and i will take the connection of that one continuation and i will do here half wound will do there and half i will take that one to return back is it clear this is one fixed coil only the main parts of the dynamometer is two coils one is fixed coil another one is moving coil but the 
fixed coil is split into two parts, two equal part here. Now that is, this is one equal half of the fixed coil, another half of the fixed coil. Is it clear? It has one fixed coil means two half of the fixed coil it has here now. Both are placed that away. Both are placed from some distance here now. Because why the distance is required? The electromagnetic, whatever the yeah, sorry, electro induction, mutual induction should be occurs over there or not in between that one. The flux should have to produce over there. For that reason, we are placing away from this one, one half coil we are placing here and some half coil we are placing here. Okay, it has one fixed coil, means two half of the fixed coils and one moving coil is there. Where is the moving coil? This one is the moving coil. It is also wire wound only. It is also wire wound only. That is moving coil, which is connected to the spindle. Here the spindle is there and that spindle is connected to the pointer and the spindle is also, it has with spring control spring and it is connected to the air damping system also, the external. It is also connected to the air damping system. The spring is for the controlling purpose, air damping is for the damping purpose, okay? So, this is the construction of the electrodynometer. Okay, electromagnetic dynamometer, we can call that one here. Now, moving coil also, or dynamometer direct, we can call that one here. Now, it has how many coils it has? Two coils. One is fixed, another one is moving coil. The bird, the fixed coils are split into two parts, two equal parts. So, one of half of the fixed coil we have placed here, another half we have placed here. In between that two, two fixed half coil of the fixed coils, we have placed one moving coil here. We have placed one moving coil. The moving coil is attached to the spindle and the spindle is connected to the pointer, which is going to show the reading here. Now. Is it clear? Any doubts? No, sir. Okay, now you can go for the construction. I will go whatever, see here. Same thing, whatever I have explained, that one only. A fixed coil is divided into two equal half. Okay, fixed coil is okay. Usko two equal half. Ki hai. The moving coil is placed between the two half of the fixed coil. Hai. Moving coil hai na? Usko in between two half of the fixed coil, we have placed that one. Both the fixed and moving coils are air cooled. Is in, in, the, in this uh, material, in this diagram, is there any core material we are using here? No, here in between the only air is there. Here also air is there. Here also air is there in between. There is no core material at all here. No. For that reason, air acts as a core, air cold we have considered here now. So that hysteresis effect will be zero. Some uh, losses will be occur in the iron part that is core part that is eddy current losses, hysteresis losses. So we can reduce it because there is no core part at all. So air is acting as a core here. So no losses will be there. The pointer is attached to the spindle. Pointer is attached to the spindle. In a non-metallic farmer, the moving coil is wounded here. No non-metallic farmer, it has wounded. The only wounded coil we are using over there. So that is the construction here. So next we will go for the working principle here. Working principle. Okay. See here. I will start the continuation, the winding here now. In between these two points, I will give the supply here. I will give the supply here now. The current will start to flow here. Yes. The current will start yes, to sir. flow here. In this wide wound only, it is that the current will start to flow here now. In a half of the fixed coil, it will flow here now. Next, it will flow continuously to the next half of the fixed coil here. Now. Next half of the fixed coil, it will flow here. So the half in, in this half, in this half, the current is flowing. Then it will get electromagnetic. Magnetic field will produce us in between these two coil or not? Yes, sir. The magnetic field will be produced in this in between these two coil. Then that same current it will flow to the moving coil also. See here. It will flow to the moving coil here now and it will go back to the reverse here. Now, same current it is flowing here means in between these two already magnetic field is produced because of the current flowing through this one here. Now, the flux will be produced here. Now, the force will be 
produces here now the force that force which will helps to deflect the pointer here because of this force in between this magnetic field whatever the force is produced because of that force the pointer will deflects to the reading here now from zero to non zero value this is the working principle of the dynamometer you can think that one initially you will consider only two points are there plus and minus we can call that one okay plus and minus we can call that one here plus and minus so for the dc supply only plus and minus is there what about for the ac supply this instrument is used for both ac and dc i told na yes yes sir this instrument is used for both ac and dc see here for the positive half cycle first positive half cycle this will become positive the current will start to flow here and it will flow in this one and it will go back to the another half of the fixed coil and go back to the sorry same current will flow through the moving coil and go back to the negative here it will come positive half cycle it is the both the current direction of the both the coil is same the current direction in both the coil is same Yes, is there sir. any opposition no opposition okay no opposition then for the negative half cycle the current will start to flow from here like this okay it will flow first where it will flow here the moving coil it will flow okay then it will flow to the half of the fixed coil here now fixed coil it will flow and next half of the fixed coil it will flow and it will go back to the another point here next again next from positive to negative for the negative half cycle is there any opposition current opposition both yes, equals same current is flowing so there is no opposing current or there is no opposition from both the windings so both the windings direct current direction both in both the windings is same so there is no opposition for that reason only we are telling that one this instrument is applicable for both ac and dc it is applicable for both ac and dc here we can use based on the connection of this moving coil and uh, fixed coil connecting parallel series and combination of series and parallel that will act as a ammeter voltmeter and wattmeter we can connect that one this is just function or principle operating principle of dynamometer yes any doubts here we can ask now if you have any doubts you can ask is it clear yes sir okay so that same principle i have written here when the current flows through the fixed coil when the current flow through the fixed coil it produces a magnetic field whose flux density is proportional to the current magnetic field will produces whose flux density is proportional to that current flowing through that coil here the moving coil is kept in between the two fixed half coils yes the same current passes through the moving coil a mag magnetic field produced by this coil the magnetic poles are produced in such a way that the torque produced on the moving coil deflects the pointer here i told one the force in between by placing a current carrying coil or wound in between the magnetic field it is going to produce or it is going to sense the force with that force is helps to deflect the pointer here now so coil moving coil deflects the pointer moving coil itself it will deflects the pointer because which is connected to the spindle spindle is connected to the pointer so it deflects the pointer over a calibrated scale scale we have shown in the upper side over there this instrument works on ac and dc here it will works on both ac and dc when ac voltage is applied alternating current flows through the fixed coil and moving coil if we have applied ac voltage then ac current will flow through the both the coils here now i will explain here now when the current in the fixed coil reverses the current in the moving coil also reverses fixed coil mein current reverse ho gaye to moving coil mein bhi reverse ho rahe current for the alternating yes sir so torque remains same in the direction if the current direction based on the current direction the torque direction will be there for both the directions the 
the current direction is same the torque remains same since the current i1 and i2 reverses simultaneously if the current flowing through the fixed coil is considered as i1 current flowing through the moving coil is considered as i2 means if i1 is reverses means i2 will also reverses so direction will become same again for the torque so both will simultaneously reverse us here now this is because the fixed and moving coils are either connected in series or parallel here now because both are connected in series or parallel both will get the same supply for that reason it will happen here now so this is the principle of operation we have discussed here now next how much torque will be developed in this instrument here now how many coils are there mainly two oh. two coils one is fixed coil another one is moving coil here now this is the moving coil this is the fixed coil we have used this one f1 and f2 means fixed coil half fixed coil half another half we have used two coils here the inductance of the self inductance of the fixed coil is l1 and mutual inductance self uh, self inductance of the moving coil is l2 we have used whatever the mutual inductance is there that is called m we have used here now m we have used so l1 is the self inductance of the fixed coil l2 is the self inductance of the moving coil this is the moving coil m is the mutual inductance between fixed and moving coil here no in between that one the current flowing through this coil fixed coil is i1 we have considered and current flowing through the fixed coil 2 that is called not not fixed coil to moving coil that is called i2 we have considered here no for that reason from doing this one the total inductance of the system is self inductance we have to consider first yes l1 fixed coil self inductance l1 moving coil self inductance l2 the mutual inductance both the coils carrying a current here now because of that one from moving coil to fixed coil and fixed coil to the moving coil mutual inductance is there for that reason we are going to consider 2m here l1 plus l2 plus 2m is nothing but two mutual inductances we are considering here now so total inductance of the system here now from this equation first we have to remember this equation only only this equation you have to remember here later that one in a moving iron instrument what is the torque equation anyone can you tell me in the moving iron instrument we have derived one torque equation formula what is that formula half i square dl by d theta half i i square dl by d theta so we know that in case of moving iron instrument hai to humko already malum hai we we know the formula of the torque equation td equal to 1 by 2 i square dl by d theta yes dl by d theta yeah this l indicates this total l only na You substitute in this place of L. You substitute this all the values here. L one, L two, and two M here. Okay, we have substituted here in the place of L. L one, L two plus two M. We have substituted here. So L one and L two, these are uh, related to the deflection. No, how the deflection is occurring because of mutual inductance. because of mutual inductance only the deflection will occur na the pointer will vary yes or no yes sir because of mutual inductance the pointer is going to vary over there but l l1 and l2 self inductance of the fixed coil and self inductance of the moving coil both are independent to the deflection over there so this one i will not consider that one it is not a fixed constant thing only so d2 divided by d theta is nothing but zero only we can consider or one so negligible we will consider that one independent of that one so we will not consider this zero we will consider that one this is also zero here now differentiation of 2y 2m divided by d theta here now so these two are independent here now don't consider this one neglecting this l1 and l2 the value of the torque equation is td 1 by 2 as it is 1 by 2 as it is i square as it is i will write down differentiation of 2m with respect to d theta with respect to theta is nothing but 2 is constant i will take outside here now dm by d theta you can write like this yes 
Yes, sir. Okay. Next, here two is there. Here one by two is there. Two two gets cancelled here. Yes, sir. So two two gets cancelled. So TD is the equal to I square dm by d theta. We can write like this. TD equal to I square dm by d theta. Yes. You can write like this. Yes, sir. And already we know that one T C equal to K theta T C equal to K theta and in the place of T C equal to and even one more equation we know that one T D equal to T C in the starting only here now in this place we can write K C K theta equal to also you can find the theta formula also you can find here K theta equal to this one. And theta equal to i square by k dm by d theta. Also, you can write down that. So this is the torque equation. Later we will find out another. I will find out here the equations. We will go for the next here. If coils are not connected in series, a weak coils, moving coil, fixed coil, and moving coil both are connected in series. Okay. So the current flowing through this coil. The diagram I think all of you have seen or not here. I will go for this diagram. Here, I one is that same I one current will flow through the this coil, and same I one will flow to the moving coil. So all are connected in series. Yes. Yes, sir. So yes, I one equal to I two here in this place. In this place also, fixed coil and moving coil are connected in series here. Now here, I one equal to I two equal to I. We can write. Yes, sir. So that I square is nothing but like this I I one I two I one into I two here for the series connection I one is equal to I two for that reason I square we have considered here but if it is I one is not equal to I two if I one is not equal to I two then we have to split I one into I two dm by d theta we have to split that one for so you continue. So TD equal to this I one into I two dm by d theta. Whatever the I square is there, we have split it into I one into I two. Is it clear this point? This point is clear. I one is current flowing through the fixed coil. I two is current flowing through the moving coil here. Is it clear or not? Yes, sir. Okay. So next we know we already know the formula of T C equal to T D here now. So T C equal to K theta and T D equal to you substitute this one here now. I one I two d m by d theta whatever the K is there we'll send it to R H side it will become one by K here now. So this is the final deflection formula theta here now. Hence the deflection of pointer is proportional to the current passing through the fixed coil and Moving coil. This is the constant here. Now the mutual inductance is depends on the current only. So theta is directly proportional to the currents of I one and I two. I one is current flowing through the fixed coil, and I two is current flowing through the moving coil. Moving coil. So we can say that when the pointer deflection is proportional to the current passing through the fixed coil and moving coil here. Now this is the torque equation or deflection equation. We can call that one. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Any doubts? No, sir. Okay. So it has some advantages and disadvantages of this. Also, just a minute. Why it went to virtual background? Is So it has some advantages and also some disadvantages are there. Can anyone tell me what are the advantages? See, comparing with permanent magnet PMMC and PMMI, you compare with PMMC and PMMI. 
for the pmmc it is applicable only for dc yes sir no it is applicable for dc only pmmc is applicable for is it audible or not yes sir okay. yes sir and moving iron instrument is applicable only for ac and dc both but it can measure only voltmeter and voltage and current yes it can measure yes. only voltage and current but by using the dynamometer you can measure the voltage current power all three we can measure here now and there is no core air core we are using here for that reason hysteresis and eddy current errors are zero you can tell that one and air damping system we are using here now so that is effective we can call that one air damping system is effective it can measure correctly and accurately the rms value rms value is nothing but root mean square value ac voltage also it can measure here if any instrument is there it has some advantages means it also have some disadvantages also is the scale is uniform here no the scale is the deflection is the square of the current because the deflection is proportional to the current flowing through the fixed coil as well as current flowing through the moving coil here no so it is not uniform you can tell that the scale is not uniform and the power consumption is high because the wind wind we are using means it has some resistance high resistance is there the cost is more error is produced due to frequency temperature the stray field stray field means after moving the supply some because of this magnetic effect will be there and torque weight ratio is low because there is no core material we are using here no so the magnetic field strength is very low magnetic field strength is very low so these are some advantages and disadvantages are there here okay we'll go for the next point that is case 1 how there are three cases are there each case for first case we'll consider as emitter connection second case we'll consider as uh, voltmeter connection third case we'll consider as wattmeter connection here now. see here the fixed coil we have used here fixed coil and one scent also we have used scent why we have we are going to use for the scent to increase the range extension yes the range extension we are going to use the scent here now it will this explanation it is applicable for the extension of range of the dynamometer also and this we are going to use as emitter also without this scent what will happen we are going to use this one as parallel connection if the fixed coil and moving coil both are connected in parallel some swamping resistance means they, we are going to swamp adjust to, to do the current here now the current flowing through the moving coil can adjust that one here now. for that reason swamping resistance we are going to call here the moving coil is connected in series with swamping resistor and fixed coil is connected in series with scent resistor here now this scent it will helps to extend the range of the emitter it will helps to extend the range of emitter both are connected in parallel or not the circuit diagram just we have to keep the moving coil in between the fixed coil yes for that reason here the current will start to flow here the moving coil will comes here and the fixed coil will comes here now it is like this only the current will start here now and the fixed coil is half of the fixed coil is here another half is here and scent is connected here now and the another path here the moving coil is connected here now is it clear just we are fixed coil and moving coil both are connected in parallel parallel here no so that will give the emitter connection it is going to give here same diagram we have taken here see here the main current i is coming here now the current flowing through the moving coil is i1 current flowing through the moving coil fixed coil is f1 f2 we have used here now without any resistance if we want to here that diagram that is Uh, standard diagram we have told commonly we will tell that one there is no extension at all we are not extending the range means only this these two three coils will be there if we want to extend the range of the instrument in parallel with this instrument we have to connect one scent resistance we have to connect here that is designed for the extension of the range here the dotted line dikh raha hai kya 
Yes, sir. Okay. This is for the exchange and range extension we are going to call it. Whenever the I1 and I2 will be equal to equal, then the it will give the exact act as a dinometer and it is going to measure the emitter current we are going to call that one here. The moving coil is connected in series with its swamping resistance here. Now that's just a current we have used swamping resistance across a shunt together with fixed coil here. Now across a means it is nothing but the fixed coil is connected in parallel with the moving coil here. Thus, there are two separate parallel branches for fixed and moving here. Now here, one for the moving is there, another one is there for the fixed here. Now, in order that the emitter may indicate correctly at all frequency, the current in the fixed and moving coil must be in phase here. Now, for all frequency, I1 and I2 should be both are in phase. In phase means all of you have studied in the first year. Yes or no? See here, this one is, I will consider as I1 here now. I1. Suppose the I2 should have to start from this point only and it should have to end from this point and this point here. Whatever the it may be range, whatever it range means, the value magnitude may change over there. But it should have to start from here. It should have to come to zero again. Then you have to, it should have to go. It should have to come here now. This is called in phase we are going to call here. Difference means phase difference means what? Phase difference means starting from here. Here either is chaloneka and it should have to maintain some phase here. This is called phase difference we are going to call here. This is called phase difference. Clear in a concept? I don't know who has taught you to for the B triple it will come under B triple only. We have explained already this one here. So the requires the constant L by R ratio, both must be in phase. The both I1 and I2 must be in phase here. Now, this requires the time constant inductance by resistance of two branches here. Now, both the branches to be equal as otherwise the current in the two branches will not be independent of the frequency. Frequency is over, depend hote, will not be independent. For that reason, the both the coil should be in phase. We have written it now. Fixed coil and moving coil connected in parallel for emitter connection here. Now, fixed coil and moving coil both should have to connect in parallel for the emitter connection. And this parallel combination should have to connect it in series with the load here now complete parallel combination should have to connect in series with the load that will give the connection for the emitter connection in this one therefore i1 equal to i2 both the branch resistance are same here now so i1 equal to i2 we are going to consider if to extend the range of current that may be connected in parallel with meter shunt may be connected here this is the meter whatever circle here now to extend the range one more parallel resistance i have to add here I have to add it. The value of RSS is designed such that equal current flow to the moving coil and fixed coil here. Is it clear? In this one, the moving coil and fixed coil both are connected in parallel and whole circuit is connected in series with load means that is considered as emitter here. To extend the range, we have to use one cent resistance we have to use in parallel with the moving in both the coils here now, in parallel with both the coils. This much concept you have to remember here. Remember Karthik or Will you remember? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, we'll go for the emitter connection. Before coming to the emitter currents, we have told I1 equal to I2, equal to I here now, and phi equal to zero. There is at deflection is zero here. And that condition, already we know the Deflecting torque equal to I1, I2, dm by d theta here. Now, so I1 equal to I2 is there. For the emitter, I1 equal to I2. So Td is equal to I square dm by d theta. We know Kc equal to k theta. So theta equal to I square by k dm by d theta. So indirectly, we are going to show that one. The scale is not uniform. is nothing but for the emitter measurement, the deflection is directly proportional to the Deflection is directly proportional to the 
square of the current we have to we are going to show here now this equation it's going to show that one here next one case 2 we can use this one as voltmeter in this voltmeter moving coil and fixed coil both are connected in series here see here the current will start to flow here this one again the another half fixed coil then same current will flow here and it is connected in series here now. Only one current is flowing here now continuously. One current is flowing or not? There is no break or no junction here now. It will flow like this. It is flowing like this only. Is there any break? Only one current because both the coils are connected in series which will give the I mean, voltmeter reading here. Now, fixed coil and moving coils are connected in series. For voltmeter connection, a multiplier may be connected in series to extend the range of voltmeter. Extend the range of voltmeter. So, next. See here. This is the coil here now. Half coil, two half coils we are using. Fixed coil and one moving coil here. Now. The current flowing through this fixed coil is Vm by Z. V1 is nothing but voltage across fixed coil. Z is nothing but impedance of this fixed coil. Z2 is nothing but impedance of the moving coil. V2 is voltage across the moving coil here. Now. So I1 equal to V1 by Z, I2 equal to V2 by Z. We can write like this. Yes? Yes. Okay. We know the formula TD equal to I1, I2. We know the formula TD equal to I1, I2 and D M by D theta. Yes? Yes, sir. So in the place of I1, you substitute this one. And in the place of I2, you substitute this one here. Now, D M by D theta, you write as it is here. Next, V1 equal to KV we have used here. Now. Total voltage V1 equal to KV and V2 equal to KV. K is nothing but some constant. It has some other derivations over there. And V2 equal to KV also. V2 equal to KV we are going to use here. V2 equal to KV. So, so K1 is the fixed coil constant. K2 is the moving coil constant here. Now, V1 equal to K1 by K1 V by Z1. V2 equal to K2 V by Z2 here. Now, here K1 by Z1 you write separately. K2 by Z2 you write separately here. Now, V into V. V square. V square here now. So K1 into K2 I will consider as K only here now. So K divided by Z1 by Z2 V square dm by d theta. So this is also constant. K by Z1 by Z2 also constant. So we can write here now indirectly we are showing here now again here. The scale is not uniform. The deflecting torque is directly proportional to the Square of voltage. Square of voltage. Which connection we are discussing here now? Voltmeter connection we are discussing here now. So, square of the voltage it will indicate here now. And one more you have observed or not, I don't know. Here, high non inductive resistance we have used. What purpose we have used? To extend the range here now. To extend the range, the high resistance we have to connect in series with the meter here now that is called multiplier we have told we have already discussed that one sends and multipliers discussion yes sir the so same thing we are discussed here now sends and multipliers are there here now okay next one case 3 watt meter so combination of series and parallel here now it will give the watt meter here now. all of you have while doing the circuit diagram you may have considered like this. You may have, sorry, not like this, this one. Here, some coil we are going to use and in between some here, like this, the wattmeter connection we, will going to, we are going to use like this diagram. Yes, it has two coils. One is fixed coil, another one is moving coil. The moving coil is nothing but pressure coil we are going to call that is potential coil, voltage coil also. The fixed coil is nothing but current coil we are going to consider here. Both are connected here now, but the fixed coil is connected in series with load and the moving coil is connected in parallel with load here. 
अंडरस्टैंडिंग गियर नो इन द एमीटर कनेक्शन बोथ एफ सी एंड मूविंग क्वाइल बोथ आर कनेक्टेड इन सीरीज बट दीज टू आर कनेक्टेड इन पैरल बट हियर द फिक्सड क्वाइल इज कनेक्टेड इन सीरीज विद द लोड यस यस सर बट द मूविंग क्वाइल इज कनेक्टेड इन पैरल विद द लोड लोड दैट विल इंडिकेट दैट वैट मीटर इट इज गोइंग टू इंडिकेट दैट वन द पावर मेजरमेंट इट इज गोइंग टू इंडिकेट हियर नाउ फिक्सड क्वाइल इज कनेक्टेड इन सीरीज विद द लोड मूविंग क्वाइल इज कनेक्टेड इन पैरल विद द लोड द मूविंग क्वाइल इज नोन एज वोल्टेज क्वाइल और प्रेशर क्वाइल एंड फिक्सड क्वाइल इज नोन एज करेंट क्वाइल वी हैव डिस्कस हियर नाउ द फार्मूला आई विल टेल दैट वन जस्ट अ मिनट हियर सी हियर द करेंट फ्लोइंग थ्रू द मूविंग क्वाइल इज द i2 वी आर गोइंग टू कॉल i2 इक्वल टू vm द मैक्सिमम वोल्टेज sin omega t डिवाइड बाय r वी आर गोइंग टू कंसीडर बिकॉज़ नॉन इंडक्टिव वी आर यूजिंग नॉन इंडक्टिव मींस ओनली प्योर रेजिस्टिव हियर नाउ let the phase difference between the current i1 and ip is 5 it has some phase difference you consider that one current both the currents here now if the there is no phase difference then it acts as a meter here the phase difference is there for that reason watt meter here now so on that condition i1 equal to im sin omega t sinusoidal ac while discussing that one we have used this formula we cannot go that much basic over there here. okay so we have derived i2 and i1 equations here both equations are derived i1 this is i1 equation and this is i2 equation we already know the td equation equal to i1 i2 dm by d theta substitute in this place of i1 to substitute this equation i1 place me this equation you go i2 place you write this equation here now in the place of i1 we have written here in the place of i2 we are going to write like this and dm by d theta keep as it is so here 1 by r you take common outside you take down that one here vm im is there here vm is there vm im you write as it is here okay and sin omega t minus phi to keep this one as it is here 1 by r im vm sin omega t into sin omega t minus phi here now so in this one we have to convert we have to convert into cos here now we have to convert into cos so go for the next the average power the for the fluctuating part the average power will be zero yes or no the positive how much power will come that negative also it is going to both are equal means that is average power will be zero for the fluctuating part but what is the formula for cos 90 my sin 90 minus phi sin 90 minus phi cos phi And anti minus phi is cos phi. The previous equation we have used cos nine cos omega t minus phi only, na. So in this place of omega t, if it is inductive load, so ninety degree phase angle is there. On that situation, we can write the cos phi here. This sine ninety minus phi can convert into cos phi here. Now, so other things will come in the constant form. That is. Proportionality will go over there. So average deflecting torque equal to K V I cos phi here. Now, what do you mean by this K? It may be constant here. Now. And we know already T C equal to K theta. K K gets cancelled also here. Now, theta equal to K V I. K is nothing but constant here. Now, and theta equal to V I cos phi. What is the power equation here? What do you mean by power equation? P I cos. Power equation is T I cos phi only. Yes. Yes, sir. So this deflection, it is going to give the power equation, power value now. Yes. So that is called the power equation. So we are going to call here now. So this completes the dynamometer equation. Next, we will consider two watt meter method, three watt meter method. We'll continue in the next class here now. We'll continue in the next class, and this sum. Uh, if you have the confusion, we'll repeat this part also watt meter. Okay. We'll continue in the next class. I'll stop here.